Hello, my name is Barnaby Conrad. We're going to see a film, a short film, that very few people have seen. It's a film based on John Steinbeck's flight, a short story from his uh, book, The Long Valley. John himself is going to narrate it briefly at the beginning and at the end, something he never did before. In fact, it might be the only film that you can see of John Steinbeck. I did this portrait of John while we were filming flight down in Monterey, California, along the coast there. I also did another portrait of a bit player in the film uh, by the name of Whiskey the Cougar. He was a wonderful animal and he has a very brief but, but important role in the film that you will see. Let's see the film and then afterwards I'll tell you how we came to make this particular film. I'm John Steinbeck. I was born on this coast. I was raised on it. We've been here a long time. My mother taught school on the coast. I've always thought of this place as a breeder of stories. Some of them probably I made up, some I may have got through my skin, and some I heard. I remember one, though, about the tortoise family. time ago, in my country, about 15 miles below Monterey, on the wild coast of California, the Torres family had their farm, a few wind-bitten acres sloping to the sea. Mama Torres was mother and father. She had to be ever since her husband fell full length on a rattlesnake and the fangs found the great vein on his neck. There were children, Emilio and Rosa, and there was Pepe, tall and gentle. Mama Torres knew with gladness that she would soon have a man for a son, but she knew sadly that it would be at the expense of a child.
these two and go down to the rocks. And when the tide is right, get some abalone for dinner. Come on. the knife, knife, knife. And you too. You're just as lazy. Now there's work to do. A man's work. You take this paper. You give it to Mr. Miller. Who's hey, Mr. Miller? Look at the horse. The druggist in Monterrey. But a Monterrey. See, si, in Monterrey. You're almost a man now. It's time you do these things. What things? You write to Monterrey. You get the medicine from Mr. Miller. Rosa, go get the money from the jar. If there's something left, it's for you. But don't buy wine, eh? Today. A boy gets to be a man when a man is needed. Remember this, Emilio. <laughs> doing terrible things to a woman. Suddenly the knife was in my hand. It happened so fast. I threw it. I had to. Come, we must get you ready. I woke up in the rough country. Even past the redwoods. Where I've never been. big ranches up there. I will get a job. They will never find me there. Uh, 
a man now. Your father's hat and coat. Put them on. Andale. see why we have to go get him. What about the law? Oh, the law. You heard what they said when they took your old pal's body out of here. We're not even really sure who did it. I don't know what we're arguing about. We're going to stand here and talk all night long. I know the Mexican kid did it. Everybody else in here knows he did it. Now, as long as we stand here and talk, the farther away he gets. Well, I don't care who did it, but he ought to get a medal for it. Sure, he was drunk and he was asking for it, but he had no right to throw a knife in it. You see, we got to... Pick up this kid's trail. That's what I say. I gotta have some tracks. I know, and we gotta get moved, right? We can't stand here talking all night. Exactly. Kids heading for the rough country.
too late, my friend. I'm already dead. so beautiful was done by Laurindo Almeida, who was quite famous. The director was Luis Bispo. This was his first real film. How this uh, film got made might be of interest to you. I had never made a feature film, and I was quite happy to be a writer and an artist in San Francisco when a young man came to me, a very young man, student at Berkeley, came to me with this idea that he wanted to make a movie of flight. He was obsessed with the story Flight. And uh, he asked if I could help him raise the money to make it. He wanted $68,000 to make it and said he could make it in two months. A feature film in two months? Okay. 83 minutes, whatever. He said, oh, he could make it. So I put up some money and I got some other people to put up some money, and then I gave it to him. But before, as I did, I said, that, of course, you've got John Steinbeck's permission. And he said, oh, no, we're going to make the film, and it's going to be so wonderful that he will give us permission. And I said, oh, my goodness, it doesn't work like that. Uh, we, you've got to get his permission. And he said, well, I don't know John Steinbeck. Well, I fortunately did through a strange circumstance, I wrote a book, my second novel, called Matador, and to my great surprise it uh, became a bestseller, Book of the Month Club, and it was sold to the movies, to John Huston, but the best thing of all was when I picked up a magazine one day, and uh, there they asked John Steinbeck what the best book he'd read all year was, and he said, Matador. I immediately wrote a gushing letter of thanks to Mr. Steinbeck. Uh, I was overwhelmed. And I got this letter back from him the following week. Dear Conrad, I like bullfighting. To me, it is a lonely, formal, anguished microcosm of what happens to every man, even in an office strangled by the glue on the envelopes. In the bullring, he manages to survive for a while, sometimes. P.S. My wife and I are going to the Virgin Islands next week. Would you like to join us? Would I? Could I? We had a wonderful week in the Virgin Islands, and John and I became friends. So therefore, when this young filmmaker said uh, that he wanted to get John's permission, I telephoned him, and uh, he said, all right, I'll give you permission for young filmmakers. 
And uh, I'll give you permission, but with one clause, I want to see the finished product and give my approval. I took off for Tahiti with my family for three months, and when I came back, I expected to see a finished film. We went into this uh, projection booth, and we put on the film, and uh, there were some pretty good shots, and it lasted about five minutes, and the lights came on, and I said, that's great, put on the, the rest of it. And he said, that's all there is. He said, well, we ran into some bad weather and all kinds of excuses. But there we were, the money was gone, and we were into debt but because of the horses they'd rented and the, this and that. And uh, so, uh, what to do? We got another director, young, also young, but with a little more experience. And we filmed the movie in Monterey, and it got done in six weeks and it was 83 minutes long, it was a feature film. We were deliriously happy with it, that it had been done at all. But we sent it off, just on a, a lark, we sent it off to Edinburgh Film Festival, one of the most prestigious film festivals in the world, and to our astonishment, at the last minute they accepted it. And they not only accepted it, but they said they were going to put it on their opening night. The last time I saw John Steinbeck was in San Francisco. We had lunch at a sidewalk cafe with Howard Gossage, who stammered. He was an advertising man, brilliant man, and he stammered charmingly. And John Steinbeck had this growly voice. I wish I'd had a tape recorder, because he was traveling with Charlie, writing that book about the travels with Charlie. And he pointed to the big black poodle and said, Howard, what's left in life for that poor dog? He said, yesterday, up in the Redwoods, that dog lifted his leg on a tree that was 50 feet across, 150 feet high, and a thousand years old. What's left in life for that poor dog? And Gossage said, well, to John, he could always t t t t t teach. Thanks for watching.